Citroen C6 is an executive saloon, but a very different one. Whereas others emphasise sportiness, this one concentrates purely on style and avant-garde luxury. It's a rare and expensive, but very appealing choice. Being different is something that Citroen is rather good at, especially when it comes to large, luxurious cars. Roll back the years and followers of the French mark will point to great design icons like the DS, the SM and the CX, succeeded in the 90s by the less enthusiastically received XM. All big, plush, quirky and perfect for French cabinet ministers or those seeking a return to true grand touring. So it is with this C6. As rare as a Rolls-Royce, this is a car for somebody unprepared to play by the conventional rules of the executive saloon sector. Here, the dominant German brands place perceived sportiness above all else, as if boardroom buyers base themselves at brands hatch rather than beating a path from bypass to bypass. With this C6, Citroen has tried to change the rules of the game. Sleek, chic and beautifully refined, it wafts its occupants in futuristic elegance, ironing away the trials and tribulations of the roads they must travel. Large Citroens have been prioritising comfort and refinement since the last war, and it would be a disappointment were this one to be any different. It isn't. The stately shape promises relaxed, effortless performance, and uh, that's exactly what you get, uh, thanks to this car's uh, unique hydropneumatic suspension. No conventional springs or dampers here, just cylinders filled with oil and nitrogen. Now, uh, many other similar such systems vary the spring rates according to your speed and the road surface. This one goes a stage further by involving the dampers too. By using data from height clearance sensors on each wheel, the Hydractive 3 setup uh, is able to adjust ground clearance based on your speed, uh, the road surface or the number of passengers you have on board. Or you can do it manually with these two buttons here. Now the result is as close to magic carpet ride as any car of this kind can reasonably be expected to deliver. You glide over speed humps, you waft over undulations, you see road scars ahead, but you simply don't feel them. All of which would be fine, but not really worth the trade-off were this car to negotiate twisty B-roads with nauseous levels of body control. Fortunately, it's fine in this respect, with uh, sharp turn-in and surprising levels of grip that are masked by the slightly vague power steering. So yes, if you really need to, you can put the suspension into sport with this button here and throw the car into bends. You just wouldn't really want to. Power choices between a couple of diesel engines uh, driven via a six-speed auto-adaptive automatic gearbox that has uh, various driving modes which you choose depending on the conditions ahead. Uh, select S for sport and uh, it changes up more quickly. If you select the winter setting for driving on ice and snow, it has a more lethargic approach. Uh, the 2.2-litre, uh, 173 brake horsepower, four-cylinder diesel unit will be sufficient for many, but if you want uh, to press on more, there's the 240 brake horsepower, three-litre V6 HDI that I'm driving here. Rest of 60 will take nine seconds on the way to a top speed of around 140 miles an hour. So to that shape, based on the Lineage concept car of 1999, uh, resolutely modern, yet evocative of classic Citroen style from the past. The elegantly arcing roofline and long front overhang may remind older buyers of the 60s DS or the 70s SM, while the short rear overhang and uh, low slung back end also bring to mind the sharkier CX that lasted until well into the late 80s. All of which is true, but this is no retro pastiche. Is it contemporary? Is it classic? Or is it, as Citroen says, simply timeless? Everyone you meet will have an opinion. The stylists claim that the target was to develop a car with the stance and the presence of a limousine, but the chic silhouette of a coupe. At almost five meters long, it certainly cuts a stately shape with the tight panel gaps and the frameless doors with their laminated twin glazed windows offering an expensive feel. 
The concave shaped self-cleaning rear window is probably the most striking design feature, arcing down between twin buttresses to a speed sensitive rear spoiler that rises at 40 miles an hour before elevating further at motorway speeds. Inside, it's probably nicer than your living room, well, nicer than mine anyway, uh, and a world away from anything that Citroen has bought us in the past. At the wheel, it's all uh, sweeping curves and art deco finishes with exotic looking woods and expensive feeling plastics, although the use of the column stalks from the old C2 Super Mini is a bit disappointing. Design highlights include these sliding semicircular door bin covers and the heads up windscreen display that projects uh, speed, fuel info and sat nav onto the base of the windscreen so that you don't need to take your eyes off the road. But where you really want to be in this car is here in the back, reclining with a copy of Parry Match, uh, preferably in a version whose owner had the foresight to pay the extra thousand pounds for uh, the lounge pack. Now this option gives you these lovely TGV high-speed train style individual rear seats that electrically slide and recline. There's even the option of uh, pushing the front passenger seat up to 10 centimeters forward in the unlikely event that you need more uh, rear seat legroom. A third rear seat passenger though won't be quite as comfortable. As for boot space, well back there it's not massive at 488 litres and if you go for the lounge pack then you can't uh, fold these seats forward to extend it, but you do at least get this useful ski hatch for storing longer items. Now Citroen has no qualms in charging premium prices for this C6. There's a single automatic only fully loaded trim level on offer and you'll pay about uh, £35,000 for the four-cylinder version or around £38,000 for the three-litre V6 HDI that I've got here. Now those figures make the uh, cheaper 2.2-litre model look expensive. It's about seven to £8,000 more than comparably powerful versions of BMW's 5 Series or Audi's A6. But the uh, three-litre V6 HDI is in the same ballpark as obvious and comparable rivals, and it uses exactly the same engine as the comparable Jaguar XF. Whichever diesel C6 model you choose, the 173 brake horsepower four-cylinder 2.2 HDI, or this 240 brake horsepower three-litre V6 HDI, your car will come well equipped. Standard equipment includes heated leather seats, satellite navigation, climate control, rear parking sensors, the heads up uh, information display. Uh, you've also got a speed limiter that you can set to safeguard your license in urban areas and xenon cornering headlamps. Safety wise, there are nine airbags, a lane departure warning system to alert you if uh, there's a car in your blind spot and you're about to pull in front of them. And on this V6 model, a pop-up bonnet that protects any pedestrians unwise enough to stray into your path. A curb weight of nearly 1,900 kilograms partly explains why the 2.2-litre uh, diesel model's combined fuel consumption return isn't better than 37.2 miles to the gallon. Um, although the owners might be curious to know why this 3-litre V6 model with another 70 brake horsepower is actually a touch more frugal and it's cleaner, 195 grams per kilometre of CO2 as opposed to 199. Now residual values of course will be nowhere near those of German rivals so you'll need to factor that into your cost calculations and negotiate hard. At least the tiny numbers of C6 sold in the UK uh, have kept depreciation from being at the high levels that were suffered by its predecessor, the XM. Uh, insurance groups are 16 for the 2.2 and 18 for the 3 litre. Here then is an intriguing and very endearing car with effortless style, avant-garde interior design and a unique feel, a, a manner of conveyance far removed from the usual rules which means that despite its costliness and quirky nature, the C6 remains a car that it's difficult not to like. It harks back to a time when the journey was as important as the destination, about comfort and decorum rather than all out speed and handling. A future classic in the making? Only time will tell. <laughs>